Hello everyone, this is Tim, and today we're going to be talking about the Sky Realms of Juron, uh, BRP, or Basic Role-Playing, and uh, there's a couple different versions of the Sky Realms of Juron that I have. I have 2nd Edition and 3rd Edition, but it's kind of been a little while since I did a video, so hello to everybody. I am currently running a campaign of this right here. I saw lots of ads for this in Dragon Magazine, and it has like various strange species and races and you know all kind of stuff and uh just the ads were just amazing like this guy here is a shantha and there's different types of humans and uh that's a karastan i believe so i have been running a short campaign of this i've been doing like little one shots for my son to kind of test out my rules and how I'm kind of hacking the BRP system to fit this. The system itself for the Sky Realms of Juron is a little bit clunky and it's, it's like old school complex in a way that I don't find very intuitive. And I don't think I'm alone on that because there's so many different like hacks of this for various systems. Like I've seen like RuneQuest, which is similar to BRP. Uh, like one rule engine I've seen uh, just if you look around they're not that hard especially on the uh, internet archive I found some uh, like PDFs there for the, the setting and uh, those have been helpful for for my game but I just want to give you a quick little uh, rundown of some of this stuff here so these little booklets come in the box set uh, Sholari is like basically the game master for the game so this has more like setting information um, things about the Shanthas, which is the, uh, they're like the, the native species for the world. And it's, it's like a sci fantasy setting. I guess you should start there where humanity has, you know, spread out through the universe and they landed here on this strange planet that has various like crystals within the, uh, the underneath layers of the world that give off this, this magic energy you could you kind of look at it like the force that uh, all living things have it but it's also based on those like crystals and uh, there's different crystals you can get to manipulate energy in different ways um, but for me i am just boiling most of it down to d100 skills and i came up with a pretty long list of uh, skills probably due to my influence with uh not influence but i was influenced by like role master and there's a good many skills in brp too but i wanted to make a a list that was more encompassing and kind of describe the setting a little bit more but uh so yeah shalari guide it's like more like setting information for the, the gm the tother guide is like an in setting uh explanation for things uh, like, a, like like a tour guide and mile teeves art in these is just it's just great. I love this stuff. That little guy there is a scragger, and they're like teeth on legs. <laughs> and they're kind of like pests, like piranhas on land. This guy's a thriddle. Uh, it's one of the intelligent alien species. Uh, more thriddles. Uh, there's all kinds of strange insectoid type alien life forms that you can. Uh, do these things a like gidget? I think is what, we, what they be called, or gigit? I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Terrible pronunciation, but these are smoked by thriddle. It's intoxicating. And there's cliche. Uh, they're like these. I don't know. It's sort of like the. I don't want to say main protagonist, but or uh, antagonist, but they are. They're pretty nasty. They don't like to eat thriddles for breakfast. The skarmus. Uh, they remind me of different insectoid creatures in various settings. But yeah, they, they're mostly peaceful unless they're around cliche. And then they go they go crazy. And they, uh, they're like the cliche's foot soldiers. There are some like furry type species. Like this is the Krugar. Uh, um, and he was like, they were like genetically engineered by a scientist. Karastin, basically the lizard folk of the setting. Uh, Bronth, uh, human bears. Uh, Waffen, we got like the the, the wolfen type species. Uh, Croid, uh, big bulky things. Also kind of a good antagonist to challenge players. You got Thiven, which is basically like the dwarf species in this setting, sort of. They're tiny. They have like ram's horns. And they have like no nose, like Voldemort. Uh, they're pretty cool. My 
current campaign is going to be going to the city of Jobel, which has a lot of Thivin gambling and uh, just shenanigans going on. Another picture of the Shantha. And I've got a Blount here, which is basically like a, a frog type species. The Ramians, tall exoskeletons. And again, this Mile Thieves art is just, it's phenomenal. Um, part of the game is you're trying to earn citizenship. And you start off as basically someone who lives within uh, the kingdom of Ardoth. But you can have that, you know, your campaign set elsewhere. But a lot of the game is designed to go on various missions. And there's these Chalisk things that you can wear around your neck. And you get little marks and uh, people, you know, NPCs in the setting can, you know, it's basically sponsor you until you get so many and then you become a citizen. But yeah, that's it. Basically it. Craston again. Uh, player's manual. Again, this is more about the system that comes with the setting. I'm really not into that as much, but it gives some information on some of the species and uh, just some general outlooks and some tips and tricks for basically surviving in this alien world, which is a lot about interacting with uh, the various species and trying to survive, as well as you know getting more powerful and being able to cast more daishas. Uh, daishas are spells in the setting, setting. and I've kind of hacked my own version of those. Those aren't too bad to transfer. They have some crazy skills to scan for, like Aisho, Aisho signatures. Aisho again is that magic energy in the setting. Uh, it's called Tra Sense. So a lot of the species don't have eyes, which is kind of fun to mess with. I ran this adventure that comes with the box set, the Sky Realm of Coloso Visandra. Probably butchered that, but uh, yeah, it's fun. It kind of shows you that. Yes, there are flying islands in the sky. There's flying ships that usually are, you know, piloted by Ramians. Um, but it's a neat little idea for a setting. Like, it's not too hard to, like, steal an island map and plop it in the sky, put some encounters on it, put some uh, limolates, which are basically like herbs and poisons, uh, crystal deposits. What's fun, too, is there are uh, old, like, caches of human technology uh, and the pure strain of humanity, the one that haven't been like modified by the ISO, they're the ones that can use that sort of tech. So it limits, you know, what the Muadras, which are like the, the Daisha casting, the spell casting, uh, like branch of humanity versus like the, the bow cords, which are, they're good at like absorbing the, the energy from the Daishas and uh, they're big and bulky too. But anyway, that was pretty fun. Uh, my son enjoyed that. This is the third edition of the game. Found a copy of this, thankfully. Uh, it's just nice to have it in your hand. and It pretty much showcases the same information. Um, there are some different, like, random tables. Here's a picture of, like, a, a Conan-esque bow cord. You, you look at that, you basically see Arnold. <laughs> but, again, them, there's, there's great art in here. They have different... Uh, animal companions that you can ride on that are like bulky and, and slow. Uh, this is a Lothurn, for instance. Um, what's cool about settings like this too is it's not very hard to in, import just strange creatures from other fantasy settings. Um, this is where the Thrittle live for the most part. Uh, here's our little world map. And let's make sure it's the right way here. So they're, it's separated by a lot of water. Uh, the nice thing, too, is that there's a series of Shanthic uh, portals, basically, called warps that you can bounce around the setting and get from point to point. You just have to find them. But, again, exploring Shanthic ruins is, is something that could be fun. Um, humanity has almost wiped out the Shantha, and they're starting to come back. So that's kind of a cool element of the setting. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, so I ran some one shots for my son and now i'm actually running it with a, a full-time group but i'll try to update you guys uh whenever i uh, have more information and yeah good luck out there um <laughs> the main reason i wanted to film this is i noticed there wasn't a lot of uh sky realms of Duran videos out there which kind of surprised me especially since they advertised so heavily in dragon magazine back in the day all right everyone that's it i'll talk to you later